Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties, for another epi. And it's a rare epi where we've got a little bit of praise across the board for Riot Games. Talking about new cinematic LCS look ahead or LCS address and patch 14.1. Getting the notes more so than not. Thumbs up for Riot. I'm scared to even say it, Mark. Hey, man, it's double thumbs up from me, and that is a rare one for Riot Games during both of them. It's a situation where I'm sure everybody else in the community loves it, too. You got to get your dunks in, get your jokes in on Riot Games, give them the heat when they deserve it. But when they deliver like this, you got to make sure to give them those flowers, give them the roses for what we get, because League fans, we're eating good. Amazing cinematic to talk through. As you mentioned, the LCS changes being impactful and really exciting to look forward to. And then these patch notes that are going to take us in to that beginning of the season patch. Yes, sirree. We are looking good right now. Thank you, Riot Games. Unfortunately, usually it takes them getting screamed at by the collective community, which is what <laughs> happened with the 2020 three season cinematic which was more like a observer going through the map on summoner's rift but they bounce back with 2014 you get some champions that aren't usually highlighted in this one uh the trindamir ash kindred one kind of seemed like the main character energy but of course animations across the board as beautiful as ever and the appetizer for that main course of the cinematic was the Aatrox Morgana Kale Ooh. fight, of course. And this is and this has got to be from the past in the League of Legends lore, putting on my nerd glasses here to tell you. You got old Morgana with Kale before everything goes still down. still buddy-buddy, yeah. And it's still got the one billion year root going down on my boy Aatrox to keep him held down for Kale to take it out. Yes! This cinematic was fantastic. This is all the things that we talk about so many times or we ask that the community really wants. We want to see A, champions, and, you know, kind of A, B onto that one is champions we don't necessarily see as often or aren't maybe the main marketing promotional type of things get to see them involved. And then, of course, just seeing it all play out, be this world that you want to live and breathe, that you think in your mind when you're out there on Summoner's Rift, all these things, you get to see it brought to life in this cinematic. That gets you hyped. And as Riot has said, people uh, and are obviously just frothing at the mouth for more lore, but they've said even cinematics like this now going forward are going to be canon to the overall League of Legends universe. They tease this. A whole cinematic by talking about past, present, and future. Kayla Morgana, obviously, past, as you mentioned. Old man Yasuo, gotta be looking towards the future with my man with the straw hat looking real good going into that. But, I mean, they have an opportunity to start throwing all these little teasers, all these little pieces to come together for that big MMO. I know, scary to say that name in 2045 when it does release, but... Any little bit of lore that sneaks in, I think most fans are happy about. Yeah, and I, I, I love that old man Yasuo a bit, my man. Come on, what's the guy doing at the end just running in that straight line? You know, you got to dodge to the side. You got to get hit by that Asagi. Come on, man. You know Yasuo has got that cooking up for him, even at that old man age. Yes, this cinematic, it really did deliver. You know, again, it is one of these ones where the community has been quite clear on what we want from these cinematics. And, you know, yes, that type of thing should be delivered on. You still got to give that credit when it is, especially considering how poor things were last year. There's a whole situation around that. And I'm sure part of what was going to be last year is what we actually ended up with this year given how things played out if you look back at the you know the world's run you can look at the cinematics where we did have a lot of fully rendered things with Aatrox with Kale these type of things these champions i can absolutely see it being that connection where we fully realize it it fully comes through this year in 2024 it does raise questions still about what we ended up with in 2023 and how unacceptable that was but focusing on the positive happy hyped and pumped up for this year with this new interim cinematic so pumped he's smashing the desk he's ready to get into his solo queue games but they seem to have a formula now for these good ones and that is at some point you got to have a big beef boy villain and let me tell you a atrox standing about three stories high when he's chained up yeah man he was looking like a badass all the way through that one getting that darkened energy showing off love seeing that one 
if this is it, this is what you're thinking in your mind when you're bringing up these champions, you know, or you're you go and turn back the dial, you know, maybe you got to turn back that dial a little bit more if you're a boomer like me, but go back to feeling like a kid and imagining all these type of scenarios through your head when you're playing with action figures, toys, all these things. That's pretty much what you're seeing right there in that cinematic hype. Love it. These are the type of things that League needs to keep itself going and keep going strong as the game ages. Cinematics change a bit because it doesn't make me want to jump in and go play solo queue per se seeing this and begin the ultimate grind the climb but gets me excited to always see the expanding universe uh, of runeterra and what the future holds for content in all shapes and form in that universe so big double thumbs up quadruple thumbs up from both of us for the 2024 cinematic thumbs up keep coming for this year, when you had the first installment of the LCS address, Mark Z, newly appointed commissioner, felt, uh, you know, very different than the catching up with Doublelift segments. You know, he's got to be toned down. He's a little more corporate Mr. LCS, but still dropped a whole lot of big W's heading into the new year. Obviously, one of the biggest ones, I think, for me and you is that they'll be playing on the live patch for the first time ever this is just in the lcs from what we've heard which means we're going to be having i mean solo queue is going to change forever in north america and this has been a big issue when imagine having to play on two different patches and sometimes the patches are so different on live versus what they're playing it's like you're playing two different games this is a slam dunk home run take it to the bank whatever other type of expression you want to throw in there this is that win for the lcs this type of change is a dramatic shift and how things will go and how the preparation is going to be there for the lcs players again number one as you laid out you're not split between these two patches focusing in on all these things and having to go you know maybe it's a little thing and maybe you're saying oh yeah you're getting paid to play a video game you got to know these things whatever still to that exception having to run through those different numbers in that instant situation and know what you're doing it's tough all the time to be that consistent and be on top of things like that changing it now down to just that live patch it's it's get going what you're playing at home what you're scrimming on what you're playing on stage it's all the same numbers it's all, all across the board we're gonna we're gonna see fresh strategies stretch fresh cheese coming on through of course with the live patch and the best thing about that cheese well that cheese is going to emerge and you know what every once in a while of course we're going to get some stinkers we're going to get some bad cheese but you're going to get some good cheese some fine cheese that you want to be snacking on with those good meats and crackers but at the same time you got to be prepared because there's that counter waiting around the corner and that is exactly what the live patch brings and the other aspect is going to be the lcs approaching international events towards it, that type of preparation, that type of knowledge and familiarity with these patches, then having to have it go, okay, well, we're dialing it back to this one for this event. You are already practiced, already trained, already have some type of experience on that patch. Yeah, that is going to be the question is when you go to MSI, when you go to Worlds. And I mean, usually there's a big enough break that they kind of catch up to close to what is live by the time we're heading. Usually only one, maybe two patches behind. Uh, at these international events. So we'll see how the LCS is able to adapt to that. We'll see if it feels like it's an advantage to be playing an entire split on those live patches as opposed to especially the LPL feels like sometimes they're four patches behind what's actually live. And especially more so in the spring split when Riot is still balancing the huge game changes, four patches can be a completely different meta. Play your creativity as alongside that coaching staff and their willingness, you know, a, a commitment to trying new things, to being on top of that fresh cheese in the meta absolutely is going to be something to keep track of here. It's going to be a different world in this LCS operating on a live patch situation. This is going to be something else that I'm looking now at the rest of the coaching staffs, so everything else around these players. And how are you adapting to these changes to tr try and help promote these players into a better level, higher level of play. It's going to be a different world in this LCS. These are mega shakeups and absolutely the type of exciting shakeups this league needed to generate hype and bring interest in for the start of this year. Other big changes come in to the broadcast specifically. They want to shorten times in between games. So for the first time ever, they're 
pre-recording drafts. So the teams are going to be drafting, not on stage, but behind the scenes while the game before them is finishing. Then they can just run through that draft and... You know, the commentators will talk over it quickly, but saying they want to cut the time in between games in half is a bold statement to go for. That means it's going to be more pre-recorded content in terms of the analyst desk and less of that live in between game action. But hopefully that removes having any issues during the draft phase as well. Yeah, I think there there is something to be said about this and what you're kind of giving up, not having that time and that space for the analyst to talk in that type of way. I don't think it's going to be completely removed. I think there still will be available options for that as well with, as you mentioned, the pre-recorded content that the now the analysts and caster groups can come up with, you know, you're talking guys, Raz, Emily, you know, Azale, all these other ones that you're seeing chat on these type of broadcasts are now going to be freed up to do a little bit extra, a little bit more and dive in on these pre-recorded content pieces, I think is gonna be an addition to the quality in the broadcast. It's gonna be quite a change because we do have that focus on shortening times between games. And then that changes and reverses as we get towards playoffs and everything else. It goes back to a more traditional format that we have seen so far. They are gonna be listening and waiting for that feedback between how things go during this split, running that format and then changing it up later. And being open to feedback and changes potentially even as quickly as summer is maybe the thing I'm most excited for. Because still, with now only eight teams in the league, only playing 14 games in the regular season seems a bit rough. And they've talked about the best of three and they can't maintain the viewership because people don't want to watch three games of Dig versus Immortals. And I get that, but there's maybe even a triple round robin, so you're getting up to 21 games. We'll see if they listen to that feedback for summer and same goes for the NACL which was also picking up some W's we know it was rumored that they were going to be going to fearless draft that seems to be the case and shockingly it's the whole way through playoffs regular season grand finals we're going to be seeing it and they left the door open for potentially if it goes well that coming to the LCS in the future as well baby yes sir you're talking good to me right now with that one coming through fearless draft yes all the time and they see all that is a significant change of course we've talked about this with the ldl and what that meant now coming over here for the NACL first implementation of it here in the Western League, as well as, you know, the change from two game series to that three game series to now make it, of course, more impactful and have that type of effect. This is great. It's going to cause some real changes, some real heat going down in the NACL and absolutely make a lot more people. I've absolutely seen that type of reaction from the community in this point saying, you know what? I almost had no interest knowing that this is how it's going to be, knowing what possibilities I could see played in a professional type of setting, count me in. I want to be there. I want to see this go down. You add in as well that, you know, kind of tier two esports as well, bring brought in into this one uh, for that promotion tournament, bringing in Brazil, these type of things. Love to see that going on in the challenger scene. Yeah, having that whole promotion with the entire Americas, Latin America and the CB lol being included, again, feels like leaving the door open for potentially in the future that coming to the LCS, which is something else we've talked about for a long time. But a lot of these announcements very much feel like they're testing the waters, seeing how well it goes, and then potentially implementing it into the big league Again, maybe not as soon as summer, but for 2025. And some of the format changes haven't been locked in for summer. So they could be changing the very next split, depending on what the community feedback is and if Riot is actually going to listen to that community feedback. Yeah, well, at, at the very least, I think with Mark Z at the helm for this type of uh, project, you feel like you've got someone that really has a feel for the pulse of the LCS and that pulse has not necessarily been super strong, super healthy. It's barely alive the last times. couple of years. <laughs> but he's been there for those years, so he gets it. He knows it, and he is committed to making that health go up, making sure that it is stronger and better. So I think you absolutely have got someone at the helm that knows the situation, just like you and I and everybody else and all the other fans, and is just as committed and, des and desires that improvement and change for the LCS. This is a good thing. The feedback is going through, I'm sure, from lots of people too. Only going to get better. Thumbs up for the LCS. And in terms of viewership numbers, you know, 
Only four games now on the docket. If you're compressing the breaks in between games, it's going to be a much more manageable day on the Rift. And they're slotting these NACL games, fearless mode, right after the LCS. If your itch hasn't been scratched for games on the Rift. So a condensed schedule like that, you would think, might help the somewhat abysmal viewership over the last couple of years. I really think it's going to help. I think, of course, the change to weekends, number one, back That'll where we belong, <laughs> having a great time. That is going to be a mega factor. Yes, the, you know, keeping it down short. The shortening of the broadcast, I think a lot of people are kind of kind of overlook that one and just how well that will feel in the actual practice of watching through the games, going through a game day. And if it is one of those ones where, you know what, that time kind of gets saved up and everything wraps up so quickly and you want a little bit more, you got the spicy dessert, a fearless draft with the Challengers League. Love this for the LCS. The other thing that's going to change, boost viewership probably, is the absolute chaos that the first few weeks of the season <laughs> are going to be with patch 14.1 dropping. Obviously, a lot of these changes were already teased in the initial gameplay stuff for 2024, which is about a month ago now. But some of the changes, updates heading into this patch, a lot of stuff with the neutral objectives. Obviously, we know all about, about these void grubs, but the sneaky line that they threw in about Rift Herald to me, now any player that assisted in killing Rift Herald will be getting any gold that is from turrets that it kills, which Feels like it's going to put an even bigger emphasis on these early team fights scrapping around Harold. Big, a bigger emphasis for sure. And it's going to be one of those ones where I'm looking at how teams are going to adapt because I think teams over time with the Rift Herald, not all of them, or not all regions, but certainly enough of them smartened up to realize there was an advantage to getting that Rift Herald, but there's also an advantage to be played on not over committing to that Rift Herald fight that other people are trying to get, where you can get resources alone in a bottom lane, all these other things around the map, these type of plays. Now having a situation where it says, hey, you were involved in it, you're gonna get gold. When it's crashing into that type of thing, it might change how much more teams wanna commit to that area around, uh, you know, getting this Herald early and having that type of effect. Then, then you look at Baron and I know Already, you've got the RNG factor that we'll have to monitor with how the terrain around the pit changes. But now he's getting an ability that pulls everyone around him even closer into the pit. We've already seen the impact his one lazy knockup has on players. When everyone forgets that he has this raid boss mechanic that pulls everyone in, the impact that's going to have on team fights and Baron throws is its going to be a sight to see. Yeah, man, even even before you get to the knockup, is this basic spit of the poison toxic under people was getting people sometimes in bad situations. This is going to be a game changer, no question about it. This will change away how things are going, the timing of it, the you know the range of it in these team fights. You're going to have some people saying, "I did not want to be anywhere in this type of situation." I got pulled in by the bear, and just another factor to keep yourself aware of in this area of the map. Then you throw in late game, these void born red blue buffs. Everybody's gonna have a red and blue buff. Everyone's gonna be picking up these infernal cinders. It's gonna be a mess in the late game. And you go to items on this patch note. Again, just items you could be spending 35 minutes reading about all the changes, but the standout ones for me, Mythics are gone, which opens up that build diversity. People can theory craft a little bit more. And praise be, the era of stopwatch is over. It is no longer a rune. It goes into Seeker's Arm Guard and I believe Guardian Angel as well. But not everybody in the game is going to be popping these pre-10 minutes. Oh my God. That's why there were church bells ringing, fireworks, and my neighbors <laughs> clapping in their front yard. Everybody's excited about the end of Stopwatch. Yes, no more Stopwatch gaming. We've seen, how many times did we see LCK or LPL matches where it was like, you know, eight out of the 10 players all had Stopwatches up for this next fight, and then one after the other in sequence were popping up type of situation, or, oh, there's a big play. Oh, it's Stopwatched. Okay, never mind. We're going back to the board. Uh-uh, no more. We are through that era of League of Legends. Yes, That sir. era lasted like three, four years, by the way. Three, four years, and I will at least give credit, multiple attempts from Riot to try and change things up and shift it up. 
this one seems like the kill shot for me for that type of era league of legends happy to see it go these are significant changes and especially uh, i think the way that things are going to play out towards those neutral objectives the baron the added power benefit of those you know uh, blue and, and and red buffs that are avoided absolutely going to be a mega change for the league of legends world and the power scaling and lethality threat that you're going to have to identify with these teams as you get to later on and what you can and can't do and the risk of it going to be a different world man and even when you look at the champion changes on this patch note i mean it's like Hui gets three armor and a slight qol change to velkaz but despite all that it feels like it's going to be a completely different game, different meta. You remember the preseason last year, the first few weeks, first month of 2023, it, it was the same champions as we just saw at the previous World Championship. I don't think we're going to be having that issue this year. No, I don't want to I don't want to be the one to curse it or jinx it or anything else like that, but seeing what we had last year and more or less kind of the last two years of league of legends i think overall has had somewhat of a stale rotation of the champions of how you want to play the game seeing this come through the type of opportunities that are there that diversity good and bad in the sense of losing and winning to the shopkeeper now that you're not tied really to these mythic options this is going to be a different world of league of legends and i cannot wait until we dive into it. And I know people, you know, it's it's hard to keep track of all these changes and oh, the game is so different, but there's a reason this game's been around for over a decade and that is things are constantly refreshed and changed and that's honestly how a lot of these players don't get burnt out is just the love of the game and because the changes happen so drastically and so often. As someone who's been involved with League of Legends for, you know, a relatively substantial amount of years during its time of existence i can promise you these type of changes these refreshes these adaptations and innovations are necessary to keep yourself involved in this type of game never mind keep the game growing and, and you know sustainable enough at the levels that it wants to achieve with esports and then growing into the gaming market space but yes to, to keep itself fresh just for these players and for the investment of fans this is a win for us right now. And it's part of being a pro player to be able to adapt and part of your yes. skill set. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for watching.